Hey, Ralph here. <clears throat> this is a quick tip on basic network configuration for uh, RHEL 7. Obviously, network configuration is a hugely important thing. If you can't configure the network, then it's going to be very difficult to configure services that depend on the network or to configure the firewall. And, and so this is just sort of what I consider to be, you know, one of these core tasks that you have to be able to do before you even think about sitting the exam. And things have changed a little bit from 6 to 7 in terms of much greater reliance on the network manager. So let's... Uh, Let's take a quick look on how this uh, this is done. So, yeah. all right. So first off, here we've got our uh, objectives again. This is the RHCSA uh, objectives, and this is sort of the the blueprint. This is what we're you know we're going to base all of our uh, studying off of. So I'm going to go ahead and search this document for uh, network. Let's do that. And you'll see here that under operating uh, running systems, it says start, stop, and check the status of the network. That would be one thing that they want us to know how to do. Something with network file systems we'll get to later. Configure the network services to start automatically at boots. We want to make sure that it persistently starts and we have networking when the system starts up. And then the other issue there is installing and updating software package from the uh, Red Hat network. So really just basic networking is the, you know, the core task. And we can do this either graphically or we can do this uh, from the command line. Let's go ahead and take a look at our command line options first. So first off on the command line, let me get out to the command line here. The primary tool that you're going to be using here is something called the NMCLI, or the Network Manager Command Line Interface. And so the great thing about this tool is that it does support uh, command completion. So you really don't need to memorize a lot of the different uh, functions of the, uh, the Network Manager CLI. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to do an NMCLI, and then I'm going to do a connection show. Okay. And so again, when I type in connection, you know, I can go ahead and just press tab twice and it'll tell me all the different things that I can uh, do here. So I'm just going to do a connection show. It does support terse. So that would be the same thing as typing in NMCLICONSH. It gives the same results. So you don't have to type out the full word. I typically just tab complete to make sure I'm in the right place. But you'll see here I have one uh, connection, auto ethernet, and it is connected. It is using device ENS3. Now, if I want to see my devices, I'll do an NMCLI dev. And you'll see here that I have two network interfaces that are currently not being used. All right. Now, because of the architecture here, those are on a different network. But let me just show you how I could configure ENS5 for uh, networking. So I'm going to do an NMCLI. And then I'll just type in CON, okay? and then I'm just going to go ahead and press tab. Press tab twice. I want to add a connection. All right. So I'll do an NMCLI connection add. Okay. And then I've got some different options here. Again, I'm just pressing tab twice here. So we'll say connection name, uh, ENS5. Okay. And look at my tabs again. Interface name. Again, we're going to do ENS5 here. Well, that's the physical interface. I want this to be persistent. So under auto connect, I'm going to go ahead and say yes. That'll mean that it is persistent and automatically start from the system boot. Again, I'll press tab again twice for type. Okay. These are my options here. This is just a simple Ethernet connection. So I'll select Ethernet there. And then here we go. I want to give it an IP address. So I'm going to type in IP4, okay, and I'm going to do enter in the address in what we would call CIDR form. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be 172.33.10 slash 24. Okay. Now, you'll notice that I still have some more options I could provide. If I need to provide a gateway, and then I would do gateway four, and then the IP address of the gateway. So we'll say the gateway is out at 3.1, and I could continue on and configure IPv6 networking as well, but IPv6 is a network is an objective for the RHCE exam and not for this particular exam. So I'll go ahead and press enter here. Okay. Now if I do my NMCLI 
you know, connection show. There I have my ENS5. If I do an IP address show, we should see that ENS5 is configured with the correct address. Looks like it is. There's the information here for ENS5, and you'll see that it has IP address 172.33.10. Okay. So that's basically all you have to do. Okay. Now, if the if the device has an existing configuration, you know, I could you know select MMCLI, you know, connection, and you'll notice that there is a delete option. So I could delete an existing connection and then just recreate it, just like I did there. Okay, or you'll notice that there is also an option for modify. Okay, so I could say modify, and then I'll go ahead and press tab twice, and let's say we want to modify connection ENS5. Mm -hmm. And then I can just, again, just press tab twice, and these are all the different things that I could change. So connection auto connect. If I needed to make it persistent because I forgot to do that when I configured it, you know, I could do that here. If I needed to configure a name server, Okay, for example, for DNS, for name resolution, I could do that. You know, I just go ahead and say IPv4, and then I could say DNS, and then I would type in the address of my name server. And I could click, click up, I could type in plus, and then the address if I want to add an additional name server, if I wanted to set the name server. I could do that there as well. So you can modify existing connections or you could delete a connection and then recreate. Don't forget, you know, that this has to be persistent. So you're going to want to, you know, select that option for uh, auto connect. All right. So that, that would be command line, uh, NMCLI. If we want to look at this from the, the GUI, mm -hmm. come over here to my other device here. And there's a couple different ways that I can get to the network configuration. I can select applications and then system tools and then in settings. I don't use the GUI very often, but I think I'm in the right place. So there it is over there. So here's my network. That would be one way to get there. You could also just simply come up here to this network icon uh, that's up at the top there. A little networking icon there that works as well click on that and then from there I could go to my network settings so I've got again three network interfaces in here none of them are configured in this particular case um, but I know that ENS 6 is on the same network as my um, my other device uh, so I'm going to go ahead and configure that. So I'll highlight that. And then simply what you do is you click on, you know, add profile. And then from the add profile, we're going to under identity. Mm -hmm. Make sure that this box is checked here. Okay, that's what makes it persistent. So it'll automatically come on at boot time. Very important. Um, and then under IPv4. I would change my addressing from automatic to manual. I would type in the address. So in our case, 172.30.3.20 with a 24-bit subnet mask. Throw a gateway on there, 172.30.3.1. Oops. And I could also populate this with a uh, with a DNS server, uh, 192.168. Again, the, the gateway will always be local, but the DNS server does not. And 122.50, that would be my DNS server. I go ahead and click on Add. And then in order to turn this on, I'm going to want to click on this little button here. Okay. So I go ahead and click on on. And let's see what we got here. Uh oh. Now this is an interesting thing. So it, it actually configured the the 
the wrong interface. Okay? And so, you know, that is something that, you know, I've run into with the, uh, you know, with the graphical interface is that when you click on add profile, if you're not careful, mm -hmm. it will actually potentially, you know, configure uh, the wrong interface. Now, so this is not, in my particular case, this is really not the configuration I want for uh, for ENS3. Okay? So ENS3 is the one that's directly connected to a different network. So I'm actually going to go ahead and click on my settings here. I'm going to set the information correctly for ENS3. So this is 192.168.122.103. Correct gateway would be 192.168.122.1. And that server is correct. I click apply. And now if I turn my interface on and I turn my interface off, that now has the correct information. And let's go back here and let's go ahead and add another profile here. All right, and I'm going to call this ENS6. And let's go ahead and reset that IP information. Again, want to make sure that this is manual configuration. 172.30.3.20. 4-bit mask. You can see that this is taking me significantly longer than it took to get it done at the command line. Time's important, you know, on the exam. And so, you know, I personally think that you're probably going to be better served to do this with the command line interface than it would be to do with the, uh, with the graphical interface. But, um, you know, obviously that is uh, up, to, uh, up to you. Uh, that's how you want to do it. Now, let's go ahead and check. Our configuration so we've got ENS 6 here and then we've got Ethernet so I'm just gonna go ahead and quick bring up a terminal and I configured the other device to be 172.33.10 30, so I should be able to ping it that is successful so my network configuration is in fact correct. Okay. So again, the most likely things that you'll need to set, you need to set the address, you need to set the gateway, and you may need to set the, uh, the DNS uh, uh, server as well. But those are really the two methods that you're going to use. What's actually happening behind the scenes, if I I'll come back to my client device here, if you, um, I'm going to change directories to Etsy, sysconfig, network scripts. And you'll see that when I ran that NMCLI command, what it did is it created a uh, configuration file for the interface right there, the IFCFG ENS5. And if we just kind of take a quick look at that, so I'll say cat IFCFG ENS5. There's all that information that I entered uh, in the with the NMCLI. So that's what actually happened, you know, on the back end is the network uh, manager CLI created that. And the same thing on the GUI, uh, the location of the uh, network configuration files has not changed across the uh, the different uh, platforms. So hope that helps. You know, again, it's good to know both ways just in case you get stuck. But um, this is a this is a core concept. You know, if you can't configure networking, then you can't configure a firewall. You can't configure network-based file services. You really can't get anything going from a system administration standpoint. So, hope that helps, and we'll see you again.